Hello, my name is Andrew Holland, CEO of the Fusion Industry Association. As you know, every other week we publish an episode of Fusion News, where our great group of presenters rotate to give an update on the major fusion energy news and summarize why the technology advances behind the headlines are so important. And each year around this time, I get to tag in to host the yearly recap. So for today's episode, we're going to show you clips of some of the biggest moments in Fusion in 2025. And even though I've said it every year since we started, 2025 has been another big year for Fusion. But before I go into the details from the year, I want to add a late breaking story we haven't covered. FIA member TAE Technologies has announced a merger with Trump Media and Technology Group to join the public capital markets. This is the first Fusion company to become a publicly traded company. The deal, valued at $6 billion in stock, will provide the runway for TAE's plans to site and build a pilot plant. It's another exciting marker this year in the growth and maturity in the fusion industry. Along those lines, one of the biggest pieces of news that marked the fusion industry's broader advancements was investment in private companies passing over $10 billion, up from just $1.5 billion in 2020. With over $3 billion coming in just the past year, that shows progress and investor confidence growing year on year as fusion milestones are met and companies show increasing promise and route to market. Governments are also stepping forward. We saw national fusion programs upping their game around the world, like the UK government announcing a two and a half billion pound investment in June and the German government announcing over 2 billion euros in new funding. Other countries like Japan, the United States, and the broader EU are updating their strategies and may soon announce new funding themselves. Regulators made real progress too, giving companies clearer fusion-specific pathways as they move toward their first plants. Companies are choosing sites now, signing power purchase agreements, and starting to build, with companies like Google and Microsoft seeing the potential for fusion to help power the AI revolution. The workforce is growing. More than 4,500 people now work directly for the 53 Fusion developers around the world. Another big trend this year has been the realization of just how quickly China is developing its Fusion industry and calls for large-scale public investment from other countries to keep pace. And those are just a few of the highlights. To dig into these stories and more, here are some of our presenters with the top Fusion moments of the year. One, laser-powered Fusion experiment more than doubles its power output. The National Ignition Facility, or NIST, has been making steady progress, breaking records every year. In 2022, they made history by exceeding scientific break-even for the first time ever. They shot a target with two megajoules of laser energy, and they got out three megajoules of fusion energy. Then, in 2023, they achieved 3.9 megajoules of fusion energy. This increased to five in 2024, and now, in April 2025, NIF achieved a yield of 8.6 megajoules with the same input power. This means that they're producing over four times as much energy as the laser puts in. NIF uses inertial confinement, which means they depend on the inertia of the fuel itself to keep the fuel together long enough to fuse. And since that inertia is very low, that reaction has to happen very, very fast. In fact, the plasma burns for less than a nanosecond. This is done by making a frozen pellet of fusion fuel, which is heavy isotopes of hydrogen. They then coat that frozen pellet in diamond and then put that pellet in a gold cylinder. Then a single laser splits into 192 beams and all of those beams get ampl amplified to high power. Then those beams converge on the target, striking the inside of the gold cylinder that excites the gold, releasing X-rays, and the X-rays converge evenly on the pellet. The outside of the pellet explodes, but the inside implodes, reaching fusion conditions right at the center. Now, as a reminder, I'm referring to scientific break-even, not engineering break-even. For scientific break-even, we draw a box around the target, and we compare the joules of energy produced versus the joules of laser energy that went in. The long-term goal is to reach engineering break-even, where we draw a box around the wall plug and we count the kilowatt hours produced versus consumed. NIF was never designed to achieve engineering break-even. So you're probably wondering, what's the big deal here? Well, these experiments prove that controlled fusion is possible and it allows us to study a burning fusion plasma. That data is useful for almost everyone studying fusion. 
because it can inform our models and simulations for inertial confinement with lasers to magnetic confinement and tokamak and stellarators and lots of other methods. Two, Google buys fusion power. Next up is a story from The Chemical Engineer, where in a landmark commercial deal, Google has agreed to buy half the electricity output, around 200 megawatts, of what could become the world's first grid-scale fusion power plant. This plant, developed by FIA member Commonwealth Fusion Systems, or CFS, will be built in Virginia, a major hub for data centers and technology. CFS, a Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, spin-out, is designing a 400 megawatt arc fusion plant based on its smaller spark demonstration tokamak, scheduled to begin net energy breakthrough tests by 2027. The arc plant aims to be operational and grid connected in the early 2030s. Bob Mungard, CEO of CFS, said, We aim to demonstrate fusion's ability to provide reliable, abundant, clean energy at the scale needed to unlock economic growth and improve modern living and enable what will be the largest market transition in history. And Michael Turrell called the partnership a long-term bet on technology with transformative potential to meet growing energy demand. Google has been an investor in CFS since 2021. This deal represents Fusion's growing appeal to industries with massive continuous energy needs, such as data centers and AI services. The agreement also grants Google options to purchase power from future CFS plants, indicating the potential for a domestic fusion power fleet scaling over time. Three, Helion Energy starts construction on nuclear fusion plant to power Microsoft data centers. Our first story today has been all over the news, including Reuters, Yahoo Finance and World Nuclear News. It covers the announcement that FIA member Helion Energy has started the construction for their planned fusion pilot plant, codenamed Orion. The site is located in Malaga, Washington, and was chosen to take advantage of grid infrastructure in place for the nearby Rock Island Dam hydroelectric plant. But what's more, this will allow Helion to connect to Washington's primary power delivery networks and sell power directly to Microsoft data centers. For those who have been listening for a while, you may remember from 2023 that Microsoft initiated a purchase power agreement with Helion agreeing to buy electricity. Now, it's always exciting to see fusion organizations breaking ground and building new facilities. But it's also important to take a step back and put this story into a bit of context. Orion will be Helion's eighth device, building off of research from their recently completed seventh generation Polaris device. However, the company has not yet achieved a net gain fusion plasma, and their approach, the Field Reverse Configuration, or FRC, is still one of the least well-researched approaches in fusion. So with that said, selling electricity by 2028 to Microsoft is an incredibly aggressive timeline for Helion. And though everyone in the industry really hopes they make good progress, it's important to understand that these really aggressive timescales also come with risk. Four. According to a recent Commonwealth Fusion System press release, FIA member Commonwealth Fusion Systems has raised $863 million in its Series B2 round, bringing its total funding to nearly $3 billion US dollars. This brings investment in the global fusion industry to over $10 billion. The new capital will fund the Spark demonstration machine and the company's commercial ARC power plant in Virginia, expected to deliver fusion electricity in the early 2030s. Investors include NVIDIA's N Ventures, Morgan Stanley's Counterpoint Global, and a Japanese consortium led by Mitsui & Co. Google has already committed to purchasing electricity from ARC. CEO Bob Mumgard described the latest round as recognition that Tacoma Fusion Systems is making fusion power a reality. Germany announces major national investment plan for fusion energy. According to oil price and Deutsche Welle, uh, Germany has launched a 1.7 billion euro action plan for fusion energy, announced by Chancellor Friedrich Merz. The goal is to make Germany the first country to build and operate a commercial scale fusion power facility. The investment will expand support for the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics, home to the Wendelstein 7 Accelerator, and fund new partnerships with private fusion firms. The government also plans to streamline licensing for new experimental sites and demonstration systems. Energy Minister Thomas Parais said, Fusion represents a long-term pillar of Germany's clean energy independence. This is one of Europe's largest national commitments so far and shows how fusion is moving from research into industrial development. 
As we film this at the end of 2025, I just want to say thank you to everyone who follows and supports Fusion News. It's been quite a run, and we'll keep you updated on all the excitement to come. Thanks for subscribing.